Ryan. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. This is the Tom O'Brien Show after all. Uh, let's take a look at where we're at today. So <laughs> seeing the end of the day on Friday was so crazy because I remember we were right about, you know, here when I came on and I said, you know, kind of looking at everything and I'm like, I it's going to try to reach the open and see if we can do it. And I wasn't so sure. And then out of nowhere, um, this this massive leg up uh, for, for the close on Friday. And so we opened right around that level and then came right back down, making you know somewhat of the same pattern, trying to get up at the end of the day. I, I don't know if we're going to see another round of volume like that as well in the E-mini, uh, but it remains to be seen. Uh, of course, we're kind of just tracing back from highs, which is to be expected when you're making all-time highs. Of course, there's a lot of fundamental data coming out as well uh, that kind of renders everything a little bit unsure going forward. Uh, as it stands now, however, in the E-mini, we are off about 0.3%, trading right around 5,279, off from a high of 5,368. The Russell is off as well. Uh, the NQs trading off a little bit, and then the Dow futures off as well. Uh, the gold contract up 0.97% today. Of course, we had a trace back uh, as well from the highs, and... Uh, so kind of anticipating a move back. This is, again, pretty natural. When you make all-time highs, you get some movement off it. Of course, uh, you had a lot of volatility this day, but they were fighting. Um, and it kind of went on average for the uh, for that day in gold. And we're coming back up on uh, some later volume as well. See if we can test those highs. Uh, silver trading at 3072, up about 0.94% today. And copper getting some breathing room uh, too, up about 1.38. And crude oil down down more so obviously opec plus came out and said they were going to rid of this opec also but opec plus came out and said that they were going to uh, maintain uh, the, those lower production standards um, i actually do have some of the data for that as well which is just kind of neat this is the uh obviously from their meeting this is the production table they have and it would be kind of cool just to take a look at that uh, and who some of the top producers are. Uh, Saudi Arabia, obviously the top, and right under Russia. And so what is unique about this is from the January 2024 meeting, excuse me, this was in December of 2023, uh, Russia was supposed to be making 9,828. These are in thousands, of course, uh, KBDs. But they're making higher now for 2025 as well. So it's interesting to see how OPEC is kind of coming back. Um, Non-OPEC is making about the same uh, from the beginning of this year. Or they're going to, again, these are all just, they're deciding how much they're going to produce as well. Um, let me see for non-OPEC, excuse me, for OPEC plus. They're making uh, substantially less as well. This is 40,463 KBD. And uh, for this figure that you're seeing on the screen right now, at 39,000. So uh, kind of interesting. We can take a little bit of look uh, too, if I can get it. Where did it just go? Perfect. This is the monthly oil report. So essentially their growth uh, forecast for the world economy is kind of going to be unchanged um, from 2024 to 2025. Uh, world oil demand, the global oil demand growth forecast for 2024 remains broadly unchanged from last month's assessment. So they released these monthly assessments, and this is the one uh, for May as well. And so they're, they're maintaining this, this kind of production level, and uh, that's honestly to meet with demand. Uh, still, it, it's a bit agitating, I would say. Uh, definitely oil is not, or gas at the pump is not as expensive as it could be, but in St. Pete, you know, you're still paying 360 um, for a, you know, for a gallon. Uh, and we're producing very closely to the amounts we were producing, you know, pre-COVID. And, you know, we were paying substantially less uh, for that. Obviously, I think the supply is just a little bit uh, more strict, probably because of Russia being embargoed a little bit. And then also some, some projected decreases as well. But as it stands, uh, give me a second. Where did my chart go? Right here. Uh, we're, we're coming down. And that's on, that's on volume. This is on a yearly, too. So you can see kind of the volume. Uh, you know, in that time frame, and, and that's substantial volume to the downside with it as well. Uh, I believe we're going to have Teddy Kekstat on tomorrow uh, for Tommy O'Brien's show. That's the morning market kickoff, and 
I always enjoy speaking with him about that as well. Uh, so let's move forward a little bit. Uh, so, well, this is just kind of an off news, but obviously that they had a massive glitch earlier when Berkshire Hathaway was down 99.97%, uh, kind of an interesting little technical issue. Um, I always wonder how those things can happen, but that's just some quick news as well. Now, here's some big news, right? I was talking with Tommy earlier today, came on halfway through his show uh, that he had, and he was bringing up uh, things that were happening with GameStop. Obviously, uh, deep value, uh, pumped a bunch of money into it, has call options going out to June 21st, which is my birthday, everyone. So uh, maybe he'll get a, uh, uh, his wish granted on my birthday um, for making a bunch of money on call options around $20 uh, GameStop currently, it, the point was, is Tommy brought up a really solid point. Uh, it, essentially, the idea is, like, where is that money coming from that he's going to benefit off from it? Like, you know, who is he selling against, or excuse me, selling into? And it's uh, really going to be the average retail investor, right? And I, I brought up something, we'll, and we'll talk a little bit about GameStop, too, and why uh, we can look at the financials and their risk exposures, uh, of how this just isn't a good company uh, regardless. And if you're in it, even for the meme hype, you got to realize that you need to get out ASAP and you got to get a plan. These, these, the diamond hands meme is nothing more than that. It, it, it's just a meme to get you in there and people are going to make money off of you uh, if you stay in. But I, I brought up the you know, concept of what Musk did with the Dogecoin. Right. And that's exactly what what he's doing. He's you know, Elon Musk pumps up the stock. Everyone wants to get into it because it's the new hype. And then Elon sells off a bunch of it. And uh, it's it's a little investors that get messed up. But the the lore is so strong with people like, you know, deep value and Elon Musk is not a problem. So Elon Musk is now being accused of selling. This isn't the same thing, but he is selling seven point five billion of Tesla stock before releasing disappointing sales data that plunged share price to two year low. Also, he got a massive payout that was challenged by the ISS, but uh, nobody really cared, um, and it went through with it. Uh, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. We'll talk a little bit about the story when we return.